Good morning and welcome this June 28th to our senior and confirmation celebration services here at the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. We are so incredibly proud of our graduates and confirmands and are excited to share their accomplishments with you today. In addition to our student-led liturgy this morning, you'll also see some pictures of our graduates over the years, as well as our confirmation students serving at the Youth Service Opportunities Project in New York City. Please now join us in our call to worship. Happy are we, O Lord, when we walk in the light of your countenance. We exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. Your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Join us now during the prayer of confession. Holy God, in baptism you claim us as beloved children and set us apart as witnesses to your love. At times we forget that we bear the mark of your grace and act as if you have no claim on our lives. You call us to the risky work of justice and peace, but we default to what is comfortable and safe. You call us to ministries of generosity and compassion, but we make little room in our busy lives for gestures of mercy beyond moments of spontaneous kindness. Wash us again with your grace and transform us by your word. We might proclaim your good news in word and deed. Amen. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sin no longer has dominion over us, since we are not under law, but under grace. Let us then present ourselves to God as instruments of righteousness. We rejoice that, through Christ, we have been brought from death to life. While our youth summer missions won't look like they normally do this summer, with our high schoolers unable to serve with the RISE organization in New York and our middle schoolers unable to serve with YouthWorks in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, our students still have some exciting opportunities for local missions over the next two months. Some of those opportunities include our middle school and high school students making sandwiches weekly that support Bridges and Summit our high school students supporting our clothing bank, as well as some other creative projects around our church, while also finding some ways to support RISE from a distance, and our middle school students having the choice of a number of different projects that they can do from their homes or neighborhoods that support our local Morristown community. 
Many of these events will also partner with the youth from the Central Presbyterian Church in Summit, Basking Ridge Presbyterian Church, and Restore Ministries in Elizabeth. We're certainly saddened that we won't be able to see our friends at RISE and in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, but we're excited to build new relationships with other churches as well as in our community as we look to serve locally this summer. Please join me for the prayer of illumination. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This scripture reading takes place in uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 22, uh, verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. Some years later, God decided to test Abraham, so he spoke to him. Abraham answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said, Go get Isaac, your only son, the one you dearly love. Take him to the land of Moriah, and I will show you a mountain where you must sacrifice him to me on the fires of an altar. So Abraham got up early the next morning and chopped wood for the fire. He put his saddle on his donkey and left with Isaac and two servants for the place where God had told him to go. Three days later, Abraham looked off in the distance and saw the place. He told the servants, stay here with the donkey while my son and I go over there to worship. We will come back. Abraham put the wood on Isaac's shoulder, but he carried the hot coals and the knife. As the two of them walked along, Isaac said, Father, we have the coals and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? My son, Abraham answered, God will provide the lamb. The two of them walked on, and when they reached the place that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar and placed the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son and put him on the wood. He then took the knife and got ready to kill his son. But the Lord's angel shouted from him, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Don't hurt the boy and harm him in any way, the angel said. Now I know you truly obey God, because you are willing to offer him your only son. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in the bushes. So he took the ram and sacrificed it in its place of his son. Uh, Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. And when now people say, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 2020 has brought so many different obstacles for everyone. Fires in Australia, the rain was held back in Africa, a locust plague, and COVID-19 all came within three months of the new year. So many people had thought that 2020 would be the year of prosperity and change. I know that on the behalf of my fellow seniors, 2020 was supposed to be our year. The year we turned into adults, graduated high school, and started a new chapter of our lives as we go off to college. While all three of these things happened, unfortunately, 2020 is more than we expected. I remember sitting during the last class of the day on March 13th, thinking a two week break was going to be great. March is always the hardest month of the year, so a break made everyone so excited. I had started making plans to hang out with my friends every day and go out on the weekends and just be mindless teenagers for the last few months that we could do that. And we did have fun for that week until March 20th, when Governor Murphy declared New Jersey to be under a lockdown. Thus, quarantine started. I did think that it wouldn't last long, and by April we'd be back to normal, but I was sorely mistaken. All of our lives changed during those two weeks, prom, graduation, decision day, and so many more monumental senior year times were taken. I was lost for a while. I thought, why me? Why this year? Why couldn't it, all, it have all happened last year or next year? I kept asking God why he would let this happen during what's supposed to be one of the best years of our lives. My confusion reminds me of the story of the command to sacrifice Isaac on Genesis 22. God asks Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. Confused, Abraham complies with God's command. He binds Isaac to an altar, and right before he sacrifices his son, a messenger is sent from God and stops Abraham from continuing the sacrifice. I will now read a short passage from Genesis 22, verses 1 through 19. By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sands that is on the seashore. And your offering shall possess the gates of their enemies, and by your offspring 
shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing from themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The message that the angel tells Abraham from God is saying that because of his compliance and trust in the Lord, he is now blessed with fruitful children. Abraham was confused as to why God demanded him to sacrifice his son, but through his unwavering faith, Abraham complies. This is much like how we felt during quarantine. We did not understand why God chose to inflict this upon us, but if we have faith, we can get through it. I did not come to understand how desperately we needed to trust and believe in God until I was faced with extremely difficult times. Growing up in the church has definitely made a tremendous impact on the way I view things. I used to get so angry when I thought about what I could have done with my friends and family during these past few months. But now, I've come to accept what is going on and understand that God has a plan for us. And yes, he does work in very mysterious and confusing ways, but as long as we have faith in him, he will heal our wounds. I always try to remember to have patience and trust in God no matter what obstacles he puts in our path, because in the end, everything will be all right. I'm proud to present to you our confirmation class of 2020. This group has studied a rigorous curriculum while also serving in the church and meeting with a mentor throughout the year. The confirmands also spent a weekend in New York City feeding those who are in need while serving with the Youth Service Opportunities Project. Our confirmands this year are Bridget Ewing, Kevin Clark, Bennett Knessel, Griffin Thomas, Luke Stebbins, Gideon Nichols, Jana Rinaldi, 
Abby Ewing, Lily Crean, Brooke Leahy, and Colleen Ewing. And a special thanks to our mentors and Youth Service Opportunities Project leaders this year. We believe in the Creator God, Savior Jesus, and the connecting Holy Spirit. On the journey that is life, we believe that God is our guide who is leading us through the forks in the road, the hills and valleys, and the nice and rough moments. Baptism is the start of this faith journey. Whenever we remember our baptism or partake in communion, they are like roads that lead us back to God. We believe that God has created everything and everyone and that the presence of God is with everything and everyone. This reminds us that God has a plan for everything and everyone, and like the story of Esther, God could be leading us to a particular moment, the very moment for which we have been created. One of the moments that we believe that we have been called to is the service of God's people. Whenever we help those who are in need, we are walking in the footsteps of Jesus. We believe that God speaks through the scriptures in ways such as parables, so that we can understand God's grace and the love that God has for all of creation. We believe that God speaks to us in the life of Christ as an example for how to treat others with love and compassion, even when they return it with hate. We believe that the Holy Spirit, while hard to understand, is the connecting presence that brings us closer to God and other people. We believe that God is always showing God's self to us through living things such as butterflies in the air, or through concepts like fishing that illustrate that God is patient and steadfast with human beings. Even though we sin and are disobedient, God is always present in our lives and offers forgiveness. Let us always be in your care, O God. Surround us with your community and let us always be those who take comfort in your grace. Amen.
Presbyterian Women is very pleased and privileged to be granting the May C. McIntosh Memorial Scholarship to two very deserving graduates. May McIntosh lived her life based in service, service to her country as yeoman first class in the U.S. Navy during World War II, service to her industry, serving on several financial boards of the American Institute of Banking, and service to her church as elder, treasurer of PW, church school teacher. Both of the graduates receiving the award have shown the same dedication and willingness to serve. Ben Redgate, our first recipient, has been active and served our church in many ways. He has served as an acolyte since he was in the seventh grade, has served as an usher and as a greeter. He has also served as a camp counselor at our Vacation Bible School since the seventh grade and has participated in mission trips. Ben believes that the church has pushed his boundaries, providing opportunities to speak in front of large groups, leading groups of young children at VBS, and that our congregation has helped him to develop a confidence and assurance of his place in God's world. Ben will be attending Washington University in St. Louis and will be majoring in either mathematics, engineering, or computer science. Anna Alessio, our second recipient, has also been very active in our church, attending Sunday school, participating in midweek programs and choir practice. She attended YSOP trips, Youth Works mission trips, and Johnsonburg retreats. Because of her love for children, Anna has been leading the child care at Howard House for the past four years. She has also been a counselor with the Vacation Bible School, helping to lead the second graders and coming up with great science experiments. This past year, Anna had also been volunteering with the Morris After School Program and loved helping children with their homework and spending time with them. Anna will be attending the University of Rhode Island in their nursing program. Ben and Anna, please know that our prayers go with you as you head off on your next adventure. May God's grace and blessings go with you, and may you know the love and support of the congregation as you follow your dreams. The Cobb Scholarship Fund was a gift from Andrew Cobb in 1979, given in memory of his wife, Barbara Vischer Cobb. The Betty Jones Scholarship Fund was established in 2008 by David Jones in memory of his wife, Betty Green Jones, a lifelong member of this church. This fund commemorates Betty's devotion to the church and her affection for children. Betty was the school nurse at Marstown High School for close to 40 years. This year, our Cobb and Jones Scholarship recipients are Julia Darcy, Julia has actively volunteered in SKEEP, Presbyterian Church mission trips to the Dominican Republic, and Foundation for Peace mission trips. Along the way, she earned a Bachelor of Science degree in international business from Lim College. Now she feels called to continue her education and good works in NYU's Graduate School of Social Work. Ben Redgate. Ben is a 2020 Randolph High School graduate. You might know him as an acolyte in our church or as a counselor in Vacation Bible School. He's been playing ice hockey for over 10 years on both the high school team and traveling teams. Although sports have been important to Ben, he also participated in weekly math competitions and was a member of the Math Honor Society and the Science Honor Society. This fall, Ben will be a student at Washington University in St. Louis in the School of Engineering. Vienna Volansky. Vienna is a 2020 Marstown High School graduate. You may have seen her performing her acolyte duties in our church service or as a counselor in Vacation Bible School. Vienna's love is for the theater costumes. Her theater director, Katie Adams, describes Vienna as a wonderful leader with a contagious enthusiasm and passion for her craft. Vienna was the head costumer at Marstown High School's 2019 production of The Adams Family, which was nominated number one out of 100 New Jersey schools for best costuming. This fall, Vienna will be attending Northeastern University in Boston. The Eklund Scholarship. 
was established by George and Shirley Eklund in 2015. It is awarded to a confirmed member of the congregation who has been accepted as a full-time student at an institution of higher learning and has been active in various church programs, scholastic activities, and community service. This year, our recipients are Anna Alessio. Anna is a 2020 Marstown High School graduate. She's been involved in all facets of the church from mission trips, vacation Bible school, youth group, and MAP, our Monday afternoon tutoring program for local first and second graders. Anna found time to play volleyball in the high school and train and volunteer as an EMT for the Morris Minutemen. This fall, Anna will be attending the University of Rhode Island at, in the nursing program. Kaylee Lawler. Kaylee is a 2020 Randolph High School graduate. She participates in our music program at church. This fall, Kaylee will be attending Elon University in North Carolina. We wish all the scholarship recipients the best in their studies. The Worship and Music Committee is privileged each year with awarding funds to graduating seniors who have had a significant impact on the musical life of our church throughout their involvement at the Presbyterian Church at Morristown. Today we present two music scholarships, one to Kaylee Lawler and one to Paige Leahy. I have seen both of these young adults mature from the time I arrived at the church nine years ago. Both were involved in the children's choirs with Mrs. Ramsayer, and both have been involved in the Ringers on the Green for the past four years, where they have both served as co-presidents. Additionally, Kaylee has been involved over the past year with the Chancel Choir and has been a wonderful addition to our alto section. I know that your families are very proud of you, and we wish you all the best as you continue your educational and life journeys in college in the fall. You are important, you are special, and you have been gifted by God in so many ways. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us. Congratulations. I would personally like to congratulate our confirmands and our graduates. For the confirmands, I wanted to say that they did excellent work even in this unique environment. I've read their statements of faith and they are outstanding. The session has met with the confirmants through a Zoom call and has already voted them into membership in the life of the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. To graduates, I know this has been a very unique spring that you have missed some of the normal parts of celebrating a graduation, but please know it's been a unique time and we really believe that each of you are very unique in the gifts that God has given you. Uh, we're thankful for you and we know now more than ever, we're going to need those gifts and the talents you bring as you lead us into the future. Congratulations. So to the confirmands, I'm so proud of you. I was so fortunate to teach one of your classes when we were still able to be together. And I know that you are gonna be wonderful and very productive members of this church. So I'm so proud of you for coming through this year and especially this spring with all of the challenges. So congratulations to you. And to all of the high school graduates, I am giving you a big, huge virtual hug right now. I wish we could all be together where I could give you a real one. Um, I have seen you all grow up in this church. You are fabulous human beings. And um, I know as you go on and begin the rest of your lives that you are still gonna be a part of this congregation. You're certainly gonna be a part of our hearts and we love you and we are so proud of you. Congratulations. And I too want to add my congratulations and my blessing to each of you confirmands for the step that you have taken on your journey of faith. We are excited to continue to walk along with you and to our graduates as you take your next step on the adventure of education, on the adventure of life. Know that our best wishes and our blessings go with you and we cannot wait to see where you end up. God bless. God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, we trust you to provide for us and for our world. Even as if you provided for Abraham, you raised the body of Christ, the church in the world, to proclaim your good news 
to those who are bowed down by the hardships of life. We pray to you this morning for the sake of the world. Please be with the people lost in grief, even when they convince themselves they are okay, because they will need your guidance. Guide their loved ones safely to heaven and stick with the grieving. Help them through times of trouble and give them your grace. Surround all people who are sick with their healing, strength, and care. Lift up those who are caring for them. Give them strength and help them to be instruments of healing and compassion. Carry us forward as an entire global community as we continue to face this pandemic. Inspire those who are researching treatments and cures. Guide our leaders to make good decisions about our process and timeline for reopening. Please guide people to adopt the animals with no homes despite their looks or age or disabilities. All pets deserve the love and kindness. Please, Lord, help them. We pray for all youth. Guide us through the challenges and uncertainty we face in these days and help us to learn and grow to our fullest potential. Bless students everywhere as they finish a school year unlike any other. We pray for everyone who doesn't have access to good education that you might bring them from new opportunities and better ways to learn. Please help the poor. Lead them to food and water to survive, clean clothes, and a place to keep warm. We pray too for those who are on our hearts and minds today as we name them before you now. Provide for them, surround them with your love, and shine your light upon them. Hear us when we call to you, O Lord, and answer for us. For we taught in you and our, in your love. We ask all of this in our name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you feel lost as you're going out into the world, know that the God of Abraham and Isaac has a plan for you and I, and is always providing a way for us. Amen.